Hi, we're going to talk about how do we determine the true prevalence from an apparent prevalence using the concept of event trees. That So if we've completed a study to estimate the occurrence of a disease using an imperfect test, we are able, if we know the sensitivity and specificity, to determine the true prevalence. Okay, so if we remind ourselves of what these event trees are doing, we take a randomly selected individual. It either has disease or it doesn't have disease. It will either test positive or it will test negative. And that's the same regardless of whether it has the disease or does not have the disease. So any randomly selected animal could be one of four options. It could have disease and test positive, have disease and test negative, not have disease and test positive, not have disease and test negative. Okay, so how do we use this information? Well, let's imagine we've sampled 100 animals and 20 tested positive. We now actually have the apparent prevalence because that's pretty much what we always have is we know not necessarily what the true disease is, but what proportion were test positive. Okay, now the only way in which we can get a test positive around these two branches of the tree. So you're either A or you're C. Okay, and because of probability rules, that means that my apparent prevalence equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, and we know that the probability of A is the true prevalence, which is the probability it is diseased, multiplied by the sensitivity. Similarly, the probability a negative animal test positive is 1 minus the true prevalence multiplied by 1 minus the specificity. So we're just subbing in here. True positive times the standard error plus 1 minus the true positive, 1 minus the specificity. So let's move on. So if we have these 100 animals and 20 tested positive, then the apparent prevalence is 20%. Okay, and we also know that the apparent prevalence equals that formula of true prevalence times sensitivity plus 1 minus the true prevalence times 1 minus the specificity. Okay, and if we simply rearrange that equation algebraically, that is the formula that we will end up with. Okay, and you can see that we know the apparent prevalence, that's 20%. We don't at this particular point in time know the sensitivity and specificity, but let's assume that we could find that out. And if I tell you that the sensitivity was 0.95 and the specificity was 0.90, then what we're left with is that the true prevalence is going to be 0.1 divided by 0.85, which equals 0.117, and I've rounded that to 12. Okay, so using the event tree, you can see it's relatively straightforward if you, you know, you don't need to be thinking necessarily formulas if you want to backtrack and work out values. Now I'm going to let you in on a little um, secret and that is rearranging the formula from to be to move it from the subject being apparent prevalence to it being true prevalence is actually something I struggle with nowadays. So I either do use the formula or I actually put the numbers in here so that no longer am I dealing with algebra of SE and SP and, and so on. So I would replace that with the 0 0.2 and replace that with, with numbers and the reason for that is simply the less letters and, and symbols in there the easier I find it to rearrange the subject. Um, at the end of the day, there's no shame in just going straight to the formula um, and we're not doing it in this course specifically, but when I used to teach undergraduates um, for EPI, they were always allowed to bring in one handwritten page back and front, whatever size they wanted to make it, of notes and formulas which could include that formula. Okay, so just to reiterate, we can determine the true prevalence if we know what proportion tested positive, we know the test sensitivity and we know the test specificity, we can backtrack. There is a formula to do it which uses those values 
you can determine those that formula from first principles and I find it easiest to do with event tree however if that's really not doing it for you and the maths is just difficult there is absolutely no shame in writing down the formula okay and I would recommend that coming into the quiz that you really strongly consider doing that that have creating for yourself a page of formula